When it comes to credit, children start out with a blank slate, right? They've never run up credit cards, been sent to collections, or any of the other things that tend to leave a black eye on our credit score. And that's the exact reason kids are becoming the latest victims of identity theft. Danny Palmer uh, with us now. You wrote an eye-opening uh, piece, Danny, on this, on the dark web. This is really scary for parents. Tell us what's happening. Yes, it is. It is scary for parents or anyone, really. Uh, this research by cybersecurity firm uh, Terbium has uh, uncovered what they're calling a, a new trend after seeing it a number of times on dark web forums. Um, it's, as you say, it's information about children that's being put up for sale on the dark web. I mean, we're used to seeing adults having their information and data uh, uh, shared on, 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 on underground forums. Um, but with, with kids, it produces a whole bunch of uh, new risks because, well, if you're an adult and you are aware of a data breach, you're probably going to be at least so, somewhere in the back of your mind aware that, hey, this company X has suffered a data breach. I should keep an eye out on my you know, credit card score or my bank statements to see if anything untoward is happening. If uh, a hacker gets hold of information about a child, as some of these uh, children that have been caught up in these instances have been as young as four, that's not really going to be happening because a child who's four years old isn't going to be checking their online credit statements. So you could get potentially up to 15 years of use out of, out of this data before anything's found out. And by the time that's happened, that, that child, and I guess in the future adults credit rating has probably been, probably been ruined. Yeah, and that, that is, it's very scary. It's sad to think about, uh, Danny. And when it comes to, you know, verifying identification, what checks and balances are in place or are there any here in the U.S. and in other countries? Well, this is, this is a, a U.S.-based story. Uh, I, even though I'm based in the U.K., the research was based out in the U.S. And it was very much focused on the data that was being sold on dark web was data that was hacked from a, a children's hospital. And uh, these records you know, per child are being sold for um, $10 a piece before being put up to $25 a piece. And it was quite eye-opening for me as a non-US resident to how simple it seemed to be to open up um, credit accounts with just information like a social security number. Uh, it's, they were taking the social security number and using that as the basis to build a fake identity. Um, and so it was very strange to see how there was no checks and balances in place uh, to sort of say, hey, why is a five-year-old taking out a credit card? Uh, the researcher I spoke to at, at, at Terbium, uh, Emily Wilson, said there, is, there are now moves towards um, making these uh, financial institutions more secure uh, and uh, more aware of this type of activity. But it seems surprisingly easy for attackers to take advantage of this information if they can get hold of it. Uh, just imagine, for example, uh, they got information about a child and then that child goes up, becomes a teenager, um, becomes 16, 17 years old. They want to buy a car. They want to go to college. They want to um, do things like that. All things which involve uh, credit and, and, and you know, money. And I imagine it's going to be quite something if they go to the bank and, they, and the bank turns around and says, hey, I'm sorry, we can't give you that because Here's your credit reputation, which is awful because obviously the attackers, uh, hackers who are uh, using these, uh, uh, these, these information to get the credit cards, they're not exactly paying the money back. So there's been cases where children have had their, ident have had to, had their names changed because attackers have been using their details to, to conduct fraudulent activity. And can you imagine how awful that must be for the family and the child to have to change their name in order to build a proper future. It's, um, it's a very dark area of the dark web, and, and it's, it's, it's a very strange area to be, to be looking into. Yeah, it would be uh, you know, more than devastating for a family, Danny, and certainly for a teenager that's excited to do something, or again, like you said, to, to you know, uh, establish their credit and use that for college or whatever it may be, and then to find this out. Uh, so in terms of what parents can do right now, is there anything they can do to try to protect their kids' personal information? A, a good place to start would be with just keeping an eye on your, your, ch your child's uh, information. I mean, imagine in a lot of cases, a child um, will have a bank account, they will have details, um, you know, they, they, they will be information out there. 
So just be aware of, you know, I guess if a breach has happened in say your local hospital or any, somewhere that you know, involves your child's data, be aware that that information could be exploited and yes, either maybe freeze your child's social security number to ensure that there no untoward activity can, t can take place using it because if, if the attackers can't use it, the, the child is not going to be exploited in this way. Some really important information, uh, Danny, that you're bringing to light. So thank you for that. And for more on this story, be sure you stick with ZDNet. Thank you.